when the truth seeker sees, devoid of discrimination and free from impurities, then he is accomplished in his contemplation. He sees me, there is no doubt. So the truth seeker here is really the spiritual practitioner or the enlightenment practitioner. The truth seeker is one who's already found the truth, but seeking to remain established in it. So Professor Suzuki has put, when the truth seeker sees the truth, and that the truth is in brackets, which indicates to me that he's giving his own understanding here. But I'd miss that out. I would miss that out and, say, and just say, when the truth seeker sees, in other words, when the truth seeker perceives without discriminating and is free from impurities which means believing in the reality of the senses then he is accomplished in his contemplation so this is what we're going beyond we're going beyond the discriminating mind understanding that as the next verse says the world is like a mirage in the air. So this is how we know we're succeeding. When we can come back to realization without being offended or reacting to the world, then we are accomplished in contemplation. And the last phrase here is a little bit odd. The Buddha says, he sees me, there is no doubt. Well, that's the last thing we want to see. We don't want to see the Buddha. What we want to do is see as the Buddha sees. Now I'm just working from Professor Suzuki's English translation here, not from the Sanskrit original. And uh, if there are any Sanskrit scholars there, I wonder if this could be translated or understood as he sees as me or he sees as I do. Because that's what makes sense. We don't want to see the Buddha. We want to see as the Buddha sees. And this is without the discriminating mind. And there's no doubt. There is no doubt. Because once you see without the discriminating mind, you know this is reality. You know you've touched reality. I'll read verse 33 as well. In this there is nothing of thought construction. It is like a mirage in the air. Those who thus see all things see nothing whatever so there's nothing of thought construction this is along the lines of what was mentioned in verse 30 consciousness constructs thoughts constructs notions and then there's a strong psychodynamic between these notions notions of a self and notions of a world with objects and other entities in it there's a strong relationship between the two. These are all nothing but thought constructions, like a mirage in the air. Those who thus see all things see nothing whatever. Not even the Buddha. So you see it all. And it's like a dream. In a dream, there's a whole world. A whole world of people, of entities, of objects, of natural phenomena. But what are you seeing in a dream? You're seeing nothing whatever. And if this gives you a feeling of there's nothing to hang on to, what's real? What's real is the dreamer. that awareness within which the dream arises and liberation is realizing that it's a dream and so we no longer confuse it as reality so in seeing all things we see nothing whatever we see as the Buddha sees <laughs>